Mix it with my career building tip. Your mix is your business card. Um, this is a lesson that I learned um, uh, a long time ago from one of the Lord Algae brothers as an assistant, and uh, there were three of them, uh, so I won't, I won't name names, but at least you know one of them. And it was kind of an interesting thing. I was uh, working with them on a session, and uh, we were actually recording vocals. And um, he taught me a lesson that was maybe probably the most valuable lesson for my career development that I ever had. And he said that, um, he said this to me, and I don't know if I'm maybe paraphrasing it or, or, or kind of putting it in a different way. He said, your mix is your business card. And uh, when he kind of explained it, really what we were talking about was rough mixes at the time. And what he was saying was that um, he would get a lot of work um, because he would submit really good rough mixes. Like he was always very careful to, when he made a mix, a rough mix for people, which is something that you would do kind of after a session, hey, you recorded vocals and you would go in and you would make sure that he would kind of dial in a mix, you know, quick, you know, not like, you know, but, you know, kind of dial it in pretty quick and make sure that it basically sounded good, you know, compress the mix bus, you know, kind of dial it in a little bit. So it sounded a little bit more finished. And there's an important thing about that. There's a couple aspects to that, which were really important. One was that whatever it was that you were working on that day, you hear it a little bit more in the perspective of how it would sound in a mix, something that would be closer to finished. And also it was sort of what he would call like a business card because you play this mix for somebody, somebody listens to that, it's like, wow, that sounds really good. Is that finished? It's like, no, that's a rough mix. This actually happened to me. You know, I was actually working on a hip hop session for uh, Queen Latifah's label, and I was doing like a bunch of hip hop records, and this producer kind of came in, and this guy had some hit records, and, you know, uh, and so it was cool. He was kind of pressing on me a little bit, you know, kind of giving me a hard time. It was like the first time we were working together, and we had finished up, we had laid some vocals, rap in on this song, and he's like, okay, yeah, you know, print a rough. And so I started to kind of like, you know, pull some things back. So it's like, no, just print it. It's like, you know, it's like, just let me, just give me a few minutes here. Let me pull this here. He's kind of giving me a hard time, but it was like, dude, just trust me on this. And he's like, all right, all right, right. So he let me do it. And I put together this mix. Um, and it didn't take me long, you know, 10, 15 minutes, you know, maybe 15 minutes. And I kind of laid it out, printed it. We worked on a couple other tracks, same type of thing. So we worked through the day. At the end of the day, um, I hand him three mixes. He goes off to, you know, meet some other people at another studio. It's like two o'clock in the morning or whatever. So, um, you know, he goes off, works in another, another studio. Next day he comes in, we kind of work on something. I'm expecting him to give me a hard time about the mix. He's like, he's like, dude, take whatever time you need. Make a, make a cool mix. So anyway, so this was kind of going on through the day. I was like, well, what's up? What's, what's this all about? Like, you know, so he started talking, you know, cause we started to get a rapport. Like sometimes, you know, there's like a feel out period when you're working with new people. It's like, does this guy, you know, so sometimes people try to push your buttons just to kind of figure out who you are. You know, can you handle, you know, somebody giving you a hard time? You know, can you like, you know, how you respond to things? If somebody asks for something, are you on it? You know, if something goes wrong, how quick can you like, you know, you know, solve the problem? So sometimes people kind of push you a little bit to kind of get an idea of what you're all about. And so, so anyway, we started to get a little bit of rapport and we're talking. He's like, he's like, you know, so a couple of days after this, Ed, that first day, he's like, dude, I just want to tell you something. He's like, you know, we, uh, after that session it's like you gave me those rough mixes i went to a studio played it for some other people and they were like dude is that the final mix is that the final mix that sounds you know like whatever we're kind of going on and on about it and 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 he was he's sitting there and he's like no man that's the rough mix and it was like kind of in that voice which is really funny like the way that he was he was um he was saying it but what happened with that was several things and out of that i got a number of different clients, not just that one, not just establishing establishing a relationship with that one person, but with other people. Because what happened is, is that I made that person look really good. See, when that person, when that producer or that artist goes off and they play your rough mix or whatever mix that you submit to them to other people, there's going to be a response. There's going to be a reaction. So if that reaction is really positive and somebody comes back and is like, wow, that's really, really good, man. Who did that? Who did that? You know, or it makes them look really cool. Then they come back and they're going to want to keep going back to you because every time they bring you in and you do stuff for them, it sounds great on the backside. And there's a tendency sometimes where you might say like in working a mix, it's like, you know, it could be better, but the client approves of it. And, and they're like done. And you could be like, you know what? I could sort of, you know, cash this in right now, you know, like, you know, cut the check, let's go. We're good to go. We're done. Or you could say, you know what? 
this isn't quite finished yet. I, I, I hear a few things, let me make some adjustments, and then you get it into a place where you know it's really good. And that's really important because if that person may not have the sensitivity and awareness that you have, and that's true with a lot of people, and they go and they play it off for somebody, and it's like, I don't know, dude, man, you know, that piano, you know, like that vocal sound, what's going on there, you know, or this sounds like there's some weird stuff going on. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, I hired this, this guy to mix a song and, you know, it just didn't come out good. So not only do you lose that client, but then you also have zero potential of having that other person because they don't care who you are. Like maybe the only reason why they want to know your name is so they don't hire you <laughs> by accident or something. And that's really important. Whereas on the other side, if they play something as an artist for somebody and they're like, wow, dude, that's great, man. Who did that mix? It's like now all of a sudden, not only have you got that client that you work with is going to come back to you with all their other work, but now there are other people that will be following along with it. It's really important, you know, that you you really care and be mindful of this to to manage this. And just if you kind of have that as your this sort of like thing, you know, that you post on the wall, thing that you say, your mix is your business card. As you're you're passing it off, then you'll be a little bit more careful because you don't want to hand somebody a business card that's been like you know you know, like you left in your pants and kind of run through the wash and dryer six times and it's sort of falling apart, you know, and, and they can maybe read the phone number on it, but everything else looks like it's, you know, been chewed on by the dog. It's like, you don't want to pass that on. You want to pass on something that's respectable and, and you know, clean and open. So the person is like, oh, that looks cool. That looks sharp. I dig that. And that's your mix. So you have to be careful about that. Be really conscious about that and take pride in what you do. That's what, it's not about, you know, collecting coin. You collect coin, it's more of a long-term investment, the way that you do it. Really important thing. Um, and one of the most valuable tips that was given to me um, by someone in, in my career, and I could just say that this has, you know, probably one of the main reasons why I've been able to maintain a career of, you know, now over 30 years, um, making 100% of my living working in, in the music industry. And that doesn't happen by accident. It happens because you really commit to it and you do something. And this is one of the most valuable ways of making that happen. Mixing with my career building tip. Your mix is your business card.